Hello everybody, I'm back here again for our vlog of day. Today is Saturday the 5th. Today was a beautiful, gorgeous day weather-wise. Woke up this morning, it was chilly, like right down chilly. It was kind of crazy to the point that I actually threw some pants on, sweater on, and kind of chilled out a little bit. We didn't get much done. Um, Karen got up, we decided to head out and go do a little motorcycle riding, which she was got on the bike, she got chilly pretty quick. So the motorcycle, Chili, look, we were in the highway, nothing. Rode around, did some yard sailing. Was just on the verge. We stopped and the sun's hitting us. No wind, no bike. Beautiful weather for a sweater. And afterwards, absolutely calmed down. And right around, you get just a smidge of chili, which worked out great. Perfect weather. So, rode around, hit a bunch of yard sales. Nothing spectacular, nothing we couldn't live without. The whole thing there. Just kind of chilling out with it. Um, found a couple items we might have bought, but didn't need. So, luckily, to be on the motorcycle, makes you gotta really want something, so you gotta go back and get it. So, Worked out real well there, but went ahead from there. Um, we headed over to the pharmacy. She had to pick up some medication she had ordered. So basically, it was ready to be picked up. So that was a little bit colder ride over that direction, just a little farther. Hit a little faster speeds, and we chilled out. I um, got there while she was in to pick up her prescription. I went ahead and called my grandfather, who called me yesterday. I was on the phone with customer service and did this whole like just like 11 second message. You go, you could call me sometimes. I called him last six times in a row. This is his first time calling me. So went ahead and said hello. I figured I'd be a little, you know, thing. How you doing today? Good, how are you? Better than I deserve. So I would just go ahead and step it up and just go ahead and call him and say hello. To to call and talk to him for a little bit. Um, nothing major in his life going on. I asked for my address because he's never had my address. I've been living here four and a half years. Still had no idea where the hell I live. I know he, I believe he knows I live in Florida as best he knew. So it tells you how much in contact my grandfather's days. No Christmas cards, no birthday cards, none of that kind of junk. Never thought to send a, you know, edible arrangement, none of that. So kind of chatted a little bit. He talked about how basically they're trying to get him to trade in the vehicle and get a new vehicle and how his credit card he uses to give him like five cents off every dollar toward a new car and blah, blah, whatever. If you come use it today, you can get an extra thousand dollars and da-da-da, all this kind of shit. And I'm like, did you do it? He goes, oh no, with COVID, I don't want to go out. I'm like, okay anything else going on in life anything important anything big anything real didn't know what I meant so chatted a little while didn't really have much going on I kind of told him about what's going on down here told him about my father-in-law being sick being in the hospital luckily as far as I know it had nothing to do with COVID so that's a very good blessing with that whole part but it was kind of the whole thing jump back in talking about his want to trade off his car get a different car or whatever the hell I still go get a car that's what I do. go trade who gives a shit you know doesn't matter that much, but it is what it is. So went ahead, Karen got down to the pharmacy, came back out, which gave me a real easy excuse to get off quicker than normal. So I just didn't have to listen too much of this, just, I don't know, this vague, fake ass crap. But we got done there, headed back home, got a few things taken care of. I said, hey, we're gonna go over to um, Southwest of Orlando, way out there, uh, and look at some old vintage pinball machines. Somebody has seven pinball machines push post it up i've been trying to get home for a few days they're horribly slow to respond if i got a response from got an address that there'd be somebody from 1 a.m or 1 p.m to 9 p.m tonight so i've been contacting him before i headed out and said hey want to make sure somebody's gonna be there make sure they sell the machines before i drive over because it's like five hours round trip with traffic don't really want to drive five hours round trip traffic especially my truck so the guy's like yep everything over here so i went and got my run done came back jumped in the shower headed out hopped in the truck headed over there had to actually unload all my cedar I bought, which Karen still has not noticed I bought yet, so that's been fun. But I um, went ahead, headed back over, um, found the place. Um, they've especially met parking 10 bucks. I'm like, I ain't paying 10 bucks to go park in this bitch. So I drove around to my spot, God, hit the guy up a messenger so he wouldn't give me his phone number, and basically said, Hey, here's what he goes, Oh, it's in such and such business. Just tell him you're here at that business and they'll let you, you know, pay for parking. And I'm like, I've been talking to you for days now, trying to figure shit out. Why don't you tell me it's our business, not your house or whatever? So. I was like, whatever, here's what it is. I get there, walk in, nobody comes out to talk to us, nobody greets us, it's nothing, wandering around the place. Nobody around anywhere, no comments, no nothing. It's like, I'm like, what the fuck, like, what's going on? Here, feel the back. Finally start falling the sound, there's some sounds of pinballs back, pinball machines back there. Head back there, and the guy back there playing it. The guys came to pick it up, whatever it sounds like. And yeah, look at the road a little bit, pay attention, don't just run me over. But, um, so I'm sitting there stuff, and get there an employee who doesn't know shit that I'm even coming over the owner of the machines and I assume the owner of the business or the runner of the business whatever it is manager didn't tell him what the hell's going on didn't even check they're there I don't know all sold I was like what I just drove like five hours around trip to get here 
They're like, oh, you sold them a little bit ago, blah, blah, blah. That's like, son of a bitch. So basically walk back out, get my truck, and head home. So the one benefit of it on the way there, we stopped in and ate at um, Tijuana Flats. Never eaten there. We're, we try to eat 52 new restaurants every year, and we're only at like 30-some. We're not at 40 yet. And we stopped in there, gave us an extra one. Beautiful, delicious food. I was surprised. Definitely eat there again, especially if I'm traveling on the road. It's definitely edible on the road in massive portions. We got a $5 burrito and a $5 um, fajita. Or Jimmy, I don't know what the hell, the little hell matter. But, and we couldn't eat it all. Like I literally had food to throw away. It was so freaking flowing. We could have got the damn burrito and been chilled out with that, two of us putting it. But didn't know we thought hell for five bucks came this tiny little thing, right? Nope, massive thing. It's humongous. So came with chips. We also got a cookie dough um, flaw or some shit wrapped up in tortilla shell. Just is what it is. It was, we didn't eat that. We were so full we didn't eat it until we got home later that night. But started driving back home. She wanted to go to Ikea, look for some kitchen cabinets and some design ideas and stuff. So I said, okay, cool, let's go there. Head to our Ikea. It's coming up on Christmas now. And Ikea was more packed. That parking lot was more full than I've ever seen it. And even when it's like half that full, Ikea has just a bad layout. So you're always bumping into people, you're always running into people and stuff. And I was like, I can't do this. I can't hang out here. I just, I don't feel comfortable being around people right now. There's still a pandemic. I know we supposedly have a, you know, vaccine coming, but it's not here yet. And I've been living my life for months now, eight months, not doing a goddamn thing with nobody, nowhere, to the point if I'm going to go get killed at Ikea, well, I can't do it. So I told her, I said, man, so you can head there if you want. I just, I couldn't, I'll, I'll give you, I think I offered like a hundred bucks just to like, let me leave. Like, can I give you a hundred dollars just so we can leave here? And she goes, yeah, that's cool. So we head out. We um, On the way out, we see a little place called Container Store or something like that. The Container Store, I don't know, some shit. Walked in there, much less people. Got to see some really cool little, like, things to put in your shelves for putting your pans and stuff on and kind of little organizers and stuff. And it's all some cute trash cans and it's all kinds of really cute little funky things. It's all like a $22,000 closet. It's particle board. It's literally chipboard like you buy at Walmart shelf with some plastic glue on laminate shit. 22 grand? I could hire a bespoke cabinet maker to build me the most custom cabinet. And no, screw you people. You're out your damn mind. But $22,000, they come put it. It's Ikea furniture inside a different store. You just bolted together with an Allen wrench. I'm like, no, I'm good. So, went ahead, we left there, um, headed on home. End up, I said, hey, do you feel like having a over? Since we didn't really have any fun day, didn't get to buy a pinball machines or nothing. I was going to try and buy two. I figured I'd two home in the back of the truck pretty easily. But they were cheap enough, wouldn't have been that big a deal. So we headed home, um, said, hey, Kai, you know, you want to come over? He said, yeah, we can invite some friends over. Nobody ever shows up anymore because just life and stuff gets in the way all the time. And mostly now it's just kind of we invite people to, to seem nice, knowing nobody will ever show up. So went ahead, reached out to one of our friends, uh, hit her up, and said, hey, last minute, our shit fell through. He's trying to do whatever, bring home the vending machines and stuff, or the um, pinball machines. Would you want to come over? No, it's the crazy last long shot. And she goes, actually, I might. Now with a buddy of mine, a friend, she's a guy she's been dating since even a little bit. They were out. They were really not doing nothing, hanging out at hooligans by themselves, sitting on the corner talking. And they said, yeah, you're not that far down. It's a 40-minute drive or so down does. So I said, we should be home within an hour. If you want to head to, you know, this way, let us know. She goes, yeah, well, they talked it over. They decided to come over. So went ahead. They cashed out, and they headed down. Um, hung out here. We talked, uh, talked a little bit. Him and I smoked a cigar each. Um, just little short ones, little factory seconds. Something takes, I don't know. 45 minutes maybe at most. Chilled out there. It was getting a little chilly in the night. I had a fire going. Um, beautiful little fire in the chimney. Kept him nice and toasty warm. She was sitting a little too far away from it. Kind of complained about being a little chilly. We had a good laugh. But I said, should have sat this chair. I told her that. So we kind of laughed there. Um, from there, we basically decided to hop in the hot tub. Like we always do. It's totally an optional hot tub. And all the years, uh, almost two years stuff, everybody we had in there, only one person um, left their suit on, which never shamed no so word, but said, we're still getting naked, so it's up to you. So the four of us end up popping in there real quick, had ourselves a real good time, just talking, laughing, joking, talking about anything and everything. It's amazing how much you let your guard down when you're naked and talk about things that you wouldn't think you would normally talk about with basically strangers. We met this dude for the first time here ever. Now we knew her from before, knew her very well for a few years now, but didn't know this dude for nothing. Found out all kinds of cool things, had a great time, laughed and joked, chilled out there. Um, I got out finally. It was like 12.50. It was late. Like, we're not that, we're not, we're old. Fuck, we don't stay up that late. So we got up, basically got all dried off, got clothes back on, whatever. They headed out. I put all the stuff away, the chairs away, the cushions away, hang. And asked her to text me when she got home, let me know she's safe and alive. And never to hear from her. So, hell, who knows? They might have been abducted by aliens. I don't know. But we'll see, I guess. So, but yeah, had a good time. 
made something the other day. It may not turn out pretty well, but the vending machine, or the, I keep saying vending machine, pinball machines really sucked because I had every intention of picking up at least one, maybe two pinball machines for her today. And that did not happen, but this is what I felt like a piece of crap. I just really felt bad making her right away over there. So I was going to go over by myself and not make her go. And I thought, well, I kind of wanted her to pick out the one that she get the right one she wanted. It's not like I could hide the damn thing in the kitchen until she gets there, you know, on Christmas Day. So it's already kind of spoiled that surprise, but it didn't work out. Then I got to Ikea and like a little like OCD bitch. I like chickened out and didn't go in there like a germaphobe. And I felt like a damn loser. I felt like a complete loser right then. It's just like, man, I can't do anything today to make my wife happy. So it is what it is. But I think overall, I hope she's still happy with me. But won't know, I guess, until she decides to stick around or divorce me, I guess. But it is what it is. So... Definitely felt like a piece of crap. We did ultimately home though. Um, put an offer on the duplex. We actually put in two offers. Um, my agent has spoke to him about knowing the fact that I wanted to raise the rent, hundred dollars a month on each side. So two hundred dollars a month extra income to me, and they're about four hundred dollars, maybe five hundred dollars below market value in that spot. Some people say six hundred bucks per side, the other side, but I think that's pushing a little bit. I'm guessing they're probably four hundred dollars per side down which is $800 a month difference, a giant difference in how much I want to pay that man. You got a place that is worth a lot less to me when you have lower rent. Because for every every thousand dollars you're off, let's say every $10,000 you're off, it's about 50 bucks a month of my payment. So if you're willing to increase that payment, as you increase that payment the last six and a half years that they've been renting from you, every year a few dollars as you go up, you add another 50 bucks, that's worth 10 grand to me. Times two people, that's worth 20 grand to me. 100 bucks two sides that's worth 40 grand to me i want to pay you forty thousand dollars more if you go ahead and have that rent higher now theoretically i can just pay them the cheaper price you know not raise the rent and i ask for a lease increase and they can pack out the next day or i can sign a one-year lease which they have no problem signing but you won't ask them for a hundred bucks a month extra which i'm like cool how bad do you want to keep your word that people saying you never raise the rent i'll lower my offer you know 14 15 grand one year's lease 14 grand i'm gonna lower that damn thing and here's my offer. I gave him the offer. This price, this one year lease from both sides, $100 increase on each side. It's nothing. Or, exact same offer I offered it, 14, I lowered it $14,500. No, a one year lease um, agreement extension, no increase. So, if he's smart, he'll take the $14,000 cash, write them a check for $2,400 or $1,200 each, which I'll ask for an increase in payment. But write them each a twelve hundred dollar check. Hell, write them a six thousand, a sixteen hundred dollar check for their time and suffering. He still pockets the rest of that money. He could write them each a two thousand dollar check, still pocket ten grand extra in the sale of that property. But we'll see what he thinks. So those are gonna get turned in on Sunday, which is technically today, because um, it was late when I sent them on Saturday and had that laugh that I literally made an offer on a property, two offers that are just under nine times. Yeah eight and a half times higher than the highest offer I've ever paid for a house before in my life. And one house worth nine and a half times, eight and a half times, eight and a half times what I paid for the high, most expensive house in my lifetime. And that's scary as shit. Um, it's seven and a half times higher. Yeah, seven and a half times higher than what my, no, six and a half, six and a half times higher than what my wife's ever paid for a house in her day. And this is a scary ass deal. So. A lot of money for a property we're never going to live in, probably. Property we're going to buy, we're going to hopefully rent out. They're going to keep making the mortgage payment on us. We're going to have a little bit of bankroll coming out of there at the end. And then in 15, 20 years, we'll have a lot of money, hopefully. So that's the goal. That's the plan. And we'll see. And who knows? Part of me thinks he ain't going to take it. I really don't think he will. I think he's got a weird, stupid number in his head. He's asking too much for it. And it's been on the market since 2006. He's been trying to sell it. The market crashed 2008. And he off and on tries to sell it. He moves these people in. He's become friends with them. So I think now he thinks he kind of has to keep them around. So like every six months, he puts it on the market for six months. Takes it back off for six months. And I think I make an extremely fair offer. My agent also felt the same way. So anyway, that's all I got for right now. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a safe and wonderful day. Thanks for watching.